Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at OpenAI's Embeddings API and how we can use it to basically turn our data into a question and answering chatbot type tool where people can talk to your data in natural language. So what we're going to do is take a look at OpenAI's question and answering embeddings cookbook. It's a Jupyter notebook. And we're going to try out the really simple example that they provide. And then maybe I'll give it a shot with my own data and see how that turns out. Okay, let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is head on over to OpenAI's GitHub account and to their repo called OpenAI cookbook slash example slash question answering using embeddings. Okay. And for my own learning, I'm probably going to take some of these cells, copy them into my own notebook um, and run them there just so that we can then do something custom maybe at the end of the video, right? But you're totally welcome to just clone this and run the cells in this notebook. So it's some preamble here. It says that GPT-3 has some general knowledge, as we know, but it can't answer very specific questions, right? Which you might need for it um, answering questions about your documentation or, um, you know, any sort of specific information. You might have some frequently asked questions on your website, etc. So let's go ahead and copy paste this. Just run this stuff, some imports. And a question. The first question we're going to ask GPT, who won the 2020 Summer Olympics high jump? Okay. And it seems that it answers pretty convincingly. Marcelo Chirigini of Brazil won the gold medal in the high jumps at the 2020 Olympics. Now, that seems correct. I don't know. Apparently, it's not, though. This guy is actually a swimmer, right? So GPT needs some help. So the first thing we can do so that it doesn't sort of hallucinate answers, because it seemed very convincing, but it really just made this up, is do some prompt engineering. And what you say is just, if you don't know the answer, say, sorry, I don't know, right? So let's take this, put it in our notebook. Okay, and it's going to say, sorry, I don't know, when we ask it who won the high jump. Now, what we can then do is give it some context so that it can actually answer the question, okay? So answer as truthfully as possible. If you if it's not contained in the text, just say, I don't know. And as you can see, we're giving some context here about what happened at the Summer 2020 Olympics. So we're going to take all this, and it should be able to answer correctly. Gianmarco Tamberi and Mutaz Essa Barshim emerged as the joint winners. Wow. So in the 2020 Summer Olympics, the high jump had joint winners, this Italian guy and this other gentleman. So now we were able to basically give it some context. And with GPT-3, you can take, I think it's a couple thousand tokens. Um, and that got, that's gotten to become a lot more in the newer models. But um, it can answer the question correctly, right? So imagine you can take this and do this for your own data. You feed it a whole bunch of your data and it'll know the answers, right? You can People can ask it in natural language, which is pretty cool. Okay, so basically what we're going to do now is take a whole bunch of data that OpenAI has very generously sort of already formatted for us and do the following steps. So I went a little bit ahead and looked to see what really happens, but basically here they're going to tell us, okay, we're going to demonstrate a method for augmenting GPT-3 with a large body of additional contextual information by using embeddings and retrieval. Okay, so... Basically, we're going to take a bunch of information, split it into chunks, and create these embeddings. Now, what is an embedding? Uh, you know, you, you can imagine embedding as sort of like a in three dimensions, as a bunch of stuff in space, right? And however close something is to something else is um, basically represents their, their similarity, right? Uh, let me see if I can pull up a graphic. Okay, so it's not the best graphic, but I think it maybe illustrates the point here. An embedding, imagine you have this three-dimensional space, and you've got the word king, queen, man, and woman. And you can see sort of how they are. If you were to go from king to queen, you've got this amount of space. Let's call it N space. And then if you go to man to woman, it's that same sort of space. So basically you're just representing relationships in this sort of format, right? So first thing we're going to do is um, let's just, I already took this and ran it and it shows us a bit of the data that OpenAI created for us. And we're going to do this with our own data later. I'm thinking some financial data, and we're going to end up with a table that looks like this. And you're going to want to do this with your own data, right? So what do we have? Okay, I got the head here. Uh, we've got a title, a heading, some content, and the tokens. So what if I just did df um, zero content? Let's see that, and let's see what the chunk is. Whoops. Okay, lock zero and then content. Okay, so this is the chunk that was retrieved from 
Um, I believe they got all this from Wikipedia articles um, and that they've put into the content column. And there's a lot of rows. So what do you do? What if we do df.shape? Let's see how many rows they've got. Almost 4,000 rows. Okay. Cool. Now it looks like the title and the heading are indices, right? So we pre-process we pre the document by creating an embedding vector for each section. An embedding is a vector of numbers that helps us understand how semantically your different texts are, like I was saying with that graphic. The closer they are to each other, the more similar their contents. Cool, and you can read more about that on the OpenAI embedding stocks, right? Okay, so all of this stuff is, um, I believe, things we would need if we're doing our own thing to compute the embeddings and stuff, but we are just going to load them from OpenAI, right? So let's go ahead and take this. We're just gonna put it in here because we might need it later. Okay, load the embeddings, great. Some utility functions. And again, we've hosted the embeddings for you so you don't have to recalculate them, right? So it seems that you'd wanna do all of this, right? If you had your own data, you'd want to create the embeddings, compute them and create them and save them into a uh, open AI, right? So instead of running all these, which I will do later for a different set of data, and you, you'll eventually have to do two for your own data. We're just going to load the embeddings, right? So I've grabbed that function and now they've hosted them for us for all this Olympics information. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that from their CDN and paste that in there and that should run, it's gonna take a second, and then we're gonna have the embeddings uh, saved into this variable called document embeddings. Great. Now, oh, here it is, okay. Or uncomment the line to recalculate the embeddings and you know use your own API key and stuff to, to run basically these function, compute doc embeddings, right? And then get them from OpenAI with their embeddings API. But they've done this for us, we're just gonna use the load embeddings function. Great, now, um, what are they? Okay, they want us to just check out an example embedding so we know what it looks like. And again, it's 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 not really um, understandable. It's just a bunch of numbers, right? In space, a vector. And there we go. There we got a, a sample embedding, a bunch of strange numbers, right? Okay, so we split our document into sections and encoded them by creating embedding vectors that represent each chunk. Next, we'll use these embeddings to answer the questions. Okay, so the first step is to find the most similar similar document embeddings to the question embedding. Okay, I think that makes sense. At the time of question answering, to answer the user's query, we compute the query embedding of the question and use it to find the most similar similar document sections. Since this is a small example, we store them locally, but if we have a large data set, okay, so there's other tools you can use if this gets really big. This makes sense. So when you first get the query, we're gonna compute the embedding and then use that to find in that vector space, if you recall, something like this, to find the most similar to that question, right? So there's a couple functions that they provide to do that. Vector similarity, which returns the similarity between two vectors in, in that space. And then a function called order document sections by query similarity. This will find the query embeddings for the supplied query and compare it against all of the pre-calculated embeddings. Okay, okay, this looks interesting. Okay, I think I got this. And we're just copy pasting, but I'm trying to go over it, see if it makes sense. And then I'm gonna try my own use case and I'll probably stumble a bit. So I might not record the whole thing. I'll just show the end result, but um, we're basically gonna redo all this with our own data. Okay, we've got that. So let's run an example. Okay, so order document sections by query similarity. Okay, cool. So this will find the query for the supply, uh, find the embedding for the supplied query and compare it against all the pre-calculated, right? So the query was who won the men's high jump? It's going to go into space and find things that are similar, find into that, not space, into that embedding and find something similar. And it's not three dimensional either, right? So we visualized it here, but it's actually uh, potentially many more dimensions than that, that this embedding is, okay, that this space is. Okay, so who won the high jump? Okay, so it find all, found all the similar ones and it's got some sort of metric here, which I guess is what it's judging by. Okay, cool. Order document sections, what's the difference here? Um, who's won the women's? Oh, it's the same thing, just a different. Okay, so these are relevant documents that are somewhat related. Okay, then what we're gonna do, this is interesting here. So if you recall in the high jump one, we basically injected some context so that it could answer. What we're gonna do here is something similar, but with the embedding, right? 
So once we've calculated the relevant pieces of context, we construct a prompt by simply prepending them to the supplied query. Okay, and you're gonna wanna use a query separator to distinguish between the separate pieces of text. Okay, let's copy this. And again, if you don't, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to just do all the copying, copy pasting into your notebook, just follow along. That's totally fine. Okay, con context separator contains three tokens. Great. Okay, so we're making a separator here with some uh, interesting, very useful um, tools. Tick token, which is imported here, and I don't want to scroll up too fast because I have a API key. So tick tokens right here. You're going to want to uh, pip install that and construct the prompt. Okay, great. Let's see where we're at. Construct that prompt. What the heck? Great, so we created this function. Cool. Now, okay, here's where we're actually going to make this prompt. We're going to pass it in the query, and then the embeddings, and then the data frame, which has all the rows, right, with all the information. Let's run that. Okay. Selected two document sections. Great. Men's high jump and men's long jump. Answer the question truthfully as possible. And here is the context that was provided. So that's very cool, right? So this is actually, is this the identical context as the first question? I think it is, right? I guess it is because we're asking the same question. Very cool. Now, um, now the answer, the questions based on the context. So now we can ask all kinds of questions, right? Not just related to high jump. Basically anything that was in that big data frame, this one here. Um, with all the content, with all the articles. So let's go ahead and take uh, this here, which is just some parameters that we're going to use. Get a little bit of water. Grab the answer query with context function. Okay. That's good. And do the same thing, but with a in here. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to figure out here is construct prompt. What is the difference? Oh, this just makes the prompt. This actually asks the question. Okay, got it. Right, so this didn't actually answer the question. I see. So here we're going to answer the query with the contest. So let's go. This should give us an answer, right? Okay, we got the document sections and the answer. Yay, we got it. Okay, the Italian guy and this other gentleman were the joint winners of the high jump. And it's got a lot more information, right? It tells us they cleared this um, and they agreed to share the gold medal. Yes, okay, so we got some context, we injected it and we got a correct answer. Okay, so after that, it's just some more examples. Let's just take uh, one of them. Okay, how many silver medals did Italy win? I wanna know that. I know Gianmarco contributed. So how many more did they win? They won 10 silver medals. Okay, so that's, and that's probably accurate based on the context. So it looks like we did it. We were able to have GPT answer questions about information that it didn't previously had, which is awesome. You can think about how powerful that is. You can basically have any sort of text that you can talk to, a transcript of a really long video um, or an entire book or just some information in your organization that you want people to be able to query with natural language. So it can't go out to the internet. It's very cool. It can't go out to the internet though, yet. Plugins just came out from OpenAI, which are, look really awesome. And I'll probably make a video about that, but that's really going to take this to the next level. But for now, I want to answer questions like this. What was Apple's net income in quarter ending December 31st, 2022? And as we know, as we did the, when we very first started this journey, it's not going to be able to answer this. It doesn't know this information, right? But we can teach it to it. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go to the Alpha Vantage website, which gives you really cool financial information. A lot of it is free and sign up for an API key. Then I'm going to do a small subset here and just get the income statement information. And that endpoint looks like this. So you're going to get quarterly data for the income statement for gross profit, total revenues, um, net income, et cetera. And what I'm trying to do is ask GPT for financial information about this specific company. So I'm going to do Apple and let's go ahead and take a look what that's going to look like. Right. So what I did is I got all those quarterly reports and I created this sort of, and again, this is sort of the lazy way to do it. And it's, I'm not an expert in sort of uh, language processing and formatting, wrangling the data and making it beautiful for that kind of thing. But if we mess around with it, we can make it better, but this is just a quick and dirty example. So, um, 
we got this response and turned it into a section, right? Remember those sections that came from Wikipedia that OpenAI open AI had already scraped for us? So we create this thing. So in this quarter, uh, here's the content and all the information, cost of revenue, et cetera. And it ends up looking like this sort of data frame. Now you can already see that um, in the embedding space, this stuff is going to end up really close in the fiscal quarter ending because the only difference here is the date. And, you know, I didn't really think about this at the time, so it's probably can be improved in many ways, but you'll get the gist. So we are going to have to compute the embeddings from all this information. Um, and if you need any help, please contact me on Twitter, Tyler, what's good underscore. Um, so we're going to take that. We don't need this load embeddings, which gets the stuff from, from the CDN, um, from OpenAI, but we will have to compute the embeddings based on that data frame. Um, and here's what I was saying about the uh, similarity based on the based on this, on that the text is all very similar. Okay, so we're going to continue here. And we're going to construct the prompt, same as before, everything is the same. And finally here, we can... Uh, see what the what the prompt looks like okay when we give it this question and then we inject information right so now we've given it the question what was the net income in this quarter and we injected all the information we got from alpha vantage so now i can accurately answer this question okay so what was apple's net income in the quarter ending uh 1231 so and it said 2999 okay so it's huge because apple makes a lot of money so i'm going to go ahead and check this actually um and go over to where could this data be? Um, oh, right, that's right, up here. Okay, we should be somewhere in here. Let's take a look. Okay, uh, five. Cool. Okay, so that was um, December thirty first, twenty two, the last quarter. Here it is. Okay, so they had an income and a net income of two nine nine, whatever trillions of dollars or whatever that is. So very cool. Um, we had that answer our question, and we basically created our own question answering chatbot for financial data, which is small leap from the original example, but it works. And I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, um, if you guys want to try this on your own data, which I think you should, because it's very fun, you can basically give it any sort of data you may have and, and talk to it. It's really powerful. And I don't, you know, I don't, I think we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. And when plugins come out, it's going to be even crazier. Okay, guys, thanks for sticking with me. I know that was a long video. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter and I'll try to help out. Um, again, it's not a super advanced example, but I think it's pretty cool functionality, the embeddings API. And like I said before, with plugins, you may not have to do some of this stuff, but it's still very cool. Um, let me know if you try your own chatbot. I will say that there's a lot of companies sort of doing this. So you can basically just upload your data and they'll make a chatbot for you. And maybe I'll link some if I can find some, but I, I know I've seen them on Twitter. So it, maybe it's not worth building your own, but um, it's definitely a really fun exercise to, to learn more about it. All right. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.